In this tutorial, we'll demonstrate how to combine custom objects, workflow automation, and Azure orchestration to grant users application access once approval is given. To follow this tutorial, ensure you have configured your preferred orchestration app for managing access. We'll use Azure as an example, but the principle applies to other identity providers like Google or Okta. We assume you've already created service items for the applications users can request. Ready? Let's get started. In your fresh service instance, navigate to the admin panel and search for custom objects. We've created a custom object called application requests with four object fields in our example. The first is application, a lookup field linked to the service items table, providing a dynamic drop-down menu that connects the custom object to your catalog service items. We've included two approvers to ensure a backup approver is available if one person is unavailable. Approver primary and approver secondary are lookup fields linked to all users, creating a dynamic drop-down menu that connects the custom object to your fresh service instances requesters. If you wanted only to allow agents to be approvers, you could select the agents table as a source instead. The last field is Azure GUID where we store the unique identifier of the group in Azure that controls application access. This is marked as an identifier field, so there cannot be any duplicate records. The next step is to add records or rows to our custom object table, one for each service item we want to control as part of our workflow. In our example, we've added two rows, one for the finance system and one for Microsoft Office 2013. Each record has a primary and secondary approver defined, and the associated GID from Azure for their respective groups. That's it, within our custom object table, we've defined two records to match our service items, with access controlled by Azure. Next, we'll create a workflow to use the dynamic content in our table to send approval emails and grant access automatically on approval. In your fresh service admin panel, head to Workflow Automator. Click New Workflow and select Event-Based Workflow since our workflow will be triggered by the event of a user raising a service request. Give your workflow a name and description, and leave the module as ticket since the action will be performed against a service request ticket. Set the events that will trigger this workflow. As we automate service requests, select Service Request is raised and Requested Item is added. This way, our workflow can be triggered by a requester raising a self-service ticket in the portal or when an agent adds a service item to an open ticket as part of the resolution. Next, set the conditions for exactly when the workflow should run. We want to exclude tickets or requests that are not one of the items in our custom object. Set the conditions as ticket fields, requested items, includes any and add your service items. Now, Build out the actions you want our workflow to take to complete the user's request. For this tutorial, we will follow the happy path first and add our error conditions second. The first action block sets the default values of our service request ticket. This ensures proper categorization and management of the ticket in the system. The type is set to service request and source to portal. We've also added a private note to clarify that the workflow has been triggered against this ticket. Although the ticket activity log would also record the workflow trigger, it's helpful to include a clear note in the ticket that a workflow was triggered and when. Next, add a reader block to look up the approver and Azure GID for the user requested service item. Instruct the workflow to read from the custom object table and filter by application, matching the application and service item name. This returns the record in the table matching the requested service item. Then, add an action block to send an approval email and update the ticket dynamically based on the custom object's data. With the data read into the workflow's working memory by the reader block, you can send approval mail dynamically to users defined in approver primary and approver secondary in the custom object. We can also update the ticket status and next steps, keeping the requester informed via ticket updates. In this example, we've written a generic message to the user inserting placeholder text to explain that the service item needs approval and by whom. In the same action block, set the ticket to pending to stop the SLA clock and assign it to the appropriate group while awaiting approval. Following our happy path, 
If the service item is approved, proceed with actions to fulfill the user's request. As we're using Azure to control application access in our example, add an app action to the workflow and select the previously configured Azure orchestration. In our example, application access is controlled by Azure Groups, so choose the action Add User to Group from the menu and insert the placeholders for the requester and object ID read from the custom object. In this example, we use requested for email as the username, ensuring that the workflow accurately adds the appropriate person to the group, whether the user requests the application for themselves or someone else. Integrate error verification into the workflow using a conditional block, first ensuring that add user to group action is successful before proceeding to avoid misleading the requester with false confirmation of success. On our successful path, add another action block to update the user. In our demo site, users receive updates through the portal instead of emails, so add a new note informing the user that their request has been successfully completed. With the user's access granted automatically, close the ticket by setting the status to resolved and categorizing it appropriately for our instance. With the happy path complete, incorporate error handling. Add an action to the condition block to handle errors if the add user to group action is unsuccessful. In our Zestaid demo instance, we address these issues by assigning the ticket to the service desk for action at a higher priority and including a note that explains the failure, the error message, and a manual workaround suggestion from the knowledge base. Lastly, set the actions for when an approver rejects the requester's ticket. In our example, we send the requester an email informing them of the rejection, who rejected it, and the approver's comments. Since rejection comments are mandatory, the approver must provide a reason to share with the requester. In our demo site, the ticket is resolved upon rejection because we cannot restart a workflow from an existing open ticket. And that's it. We've created a versatile workflow that can handle numerous requests, automatically directing tickets for approval and providing access via Azure Groups once approval is granted. Streamlining approvals and access management with fresh service custom objects and Azure integration. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest features and tutorials. If you or your organization need help with fresh service, check out our consulting, implementation, training and support services at our website. Zestco.uk Zest, a fresh perspective.